This video has been made available thanks to 42nd Street Photo. Celebrating over 50 years of service in the photography and video industry, check out their full line of products at 42photo.com. What's up, Geeksters? It's me, Omar, from GeeksterLabs.com. How are you guys doing today? Well, this video is one, of, one in a series of videos that I'm going to be filming and showing you guys of uh, featuring the Panasonic GH4, which is one of the 4K DSLR cameras that are available right now on the market. So I've been using this camera for a little bit, and so one of the things I'm going to show you guys is how you can easily set up the Wi-Fi feature of it and show you what kind of things you can do with it on your smartphone. Okay guys, so now we're here at the back of the GH4. So on the top of the camera, I'm going to press the FN1 or the Function 1 button, which automatically jumps you into the Wi-Fi menu. So here we can see we have New Connection, select the destination from History. If you've used this before, it'll actually show a history there, which I've, I've obviously played with this a little bit, so I can make that selection. The other one's grayed out, so I can't select it. So we're going to click New Connection. So here we have a couple of options here. So Remote Shooting and View. So that's what you use for uh, portable devices like tablets and smartphones, which is what we're going to be going over today. You know, some other options you have here is Playback on a TV. You can actually send images while recording and send images... Uh, stored in the camera. So those two options are something you would use uh, with uh, a computer. So if you have compu the PC software installed on the computer, you can actually wirelessly send images to the computer as you're taking them, which would be kind of cool if you're doing like a photo shoot or something like that, sending them to like a like a MacBook or, or an iMac or something like that. So we're not going to go over those options. Like I said in the previously at the beginning of this video, we're just going to show you uh, the smartphone capabilities. Okay, so remote shoot and shooting and viewing. So here it is. Please scan the QR code using the image app or enter the password into Wi-Fi settings. So at this time, whether you're on an Android or an iOS device, you're going to need to go to their uh, their App Store, whether it's the Google Play Store or the App Store, and download the Panasonic Image app. Um, it's a free app, very easy to find. Just You can probably just search Panasonic, and it should be the first one to pop up in there. So download that app. Once you do that, you'll be... Uh, you, there'll be an option in there, and I'll show you that in just one second, where you actually can either scan this QR code here, or you just go into the Wi-Fi settings on your phone, and look for the GH442E8OB. That's what the SSID is going to be in there. And then you would have to enter this really long password. So the only difference from this point on right now, whether you scan the QR code or you type in the password, is that's the only two options. You, you can either like scan this QR code, and uh, it'll give you an option to add a profile to your phone, which I'll show you in, in just a second, which basically is just adding the password into there so you don't have to type it. So if you just want to pass skip the, the QR code part of this, you can just go into your uh, Wi-Fi settings and type in the password. But if you don't want to type in a long password, that's when you would scan the QR code. This actually does offer the option for, uh, for NFC as well. So if you wanted to uh, use your Android phone's NFC, that's also an option. I don't have an Android phone with me, so I can't demo that for you guys. But it is an option available, and it's... Uh, it's basically you just hold the phone to a certain spot of the camera, and it'll uh, it'll sync up with it that way. So let's switch over to the iPhone, and let me show you what it looks like on the iPhone now. Okay, guys, so as you can see here, I've opened the application on my iPhone, the image app. And so it gives me the option. It says searching for the camera or waiting for pictures to be sent from the camera. I can close or I can do the QR code. So if I click on QR code, it asks me if I could use the camera. I say yes, go ahead. And so this is where it would actually take the phone, hover it over the QR code. It will take a snapshot of the QR code, and it will ask me to install a profile. And so basically a profile is just it goes into your phone settings, and it basically makes it to where you don't have to enter manually enter in the password for connecting to the camera. We're going to take the long route. We're going to actually manually enter it, so I'll show you what that looks like in just a second here. So so, if I, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to the my settings. I'm going to go to Wi-Fi, and I'm going to look for the SSID GH442E80B, which should be right there. So I click on that, and now I have to enter the password that it displays here on the screen. So we're going to do this really fast. So after I click on that, I enter the password. It says, if you have not launched the smartphone application, please launch it now. So it's, it can tell I, I just try to connect to it. So now I'm going to launch it again. It's searching for the camera under remote control so now I have control over the camera right there and so basically what it is it's mirroring what's on the screen right now of the camera itself as you can see right there now keep in mind you're not able to do all the functions that you would if you had the camera right in front of you like touching tapping the the front screen here to focus on certain objects but there are a bunch of things that you can do as far as tweaking settings and such if you tap here you can edit the white balance the ISO the uh, all those different settings. Right now I have it in manual, I believe. So everything, that, whatever the setting is on, on the camera itself, that's what you can adjust right here from the screen. And it shows you all the different information setting right here. So what I can do right here is I can actually take pictures of it like that. 
and it shows me a freeze frame. I can even do video as well. If I tap on there, it's actually recording the video right now. When I'm done recording the video, press the same button. And that stops recording video. So pretty much anything you want to do as far as controlling the camera when it comes to video and, and photos, you can do that. You can tweak some settings. You can tweak some options. You even have access to the quick menu as well. So if you click that right there, that's the same as hitting that but the F2 button. And you can change the photo style, the aspect ratio, the picture size, you know, metering mode, flash mode, recording mode quality, all those different options. So these are as far as the things as controlling the camera. Now, when it comes to previewing images, you click on playback option down here in the button right here in the bottom. So when I do that, now what's tapping in is checking on all the pictures that are on the camera right now. So there's even that video that we just filmed right there. This is a picture I took earlier. So I'm, I'm viewing these off of the camera. So now from here, if I want to, I can even send it to my camera roll right here. If I just press on that, copy and file to uh, my camera, and that's fine. I can And I can go into my camera, edit it, mess with it, do whatever I want to do with it, send it to YouTube. I'm not YouTube, I'm sorry, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is. Or I can, if I set up my uh my this these options right here i can send it to facebook twitter youtube picasso Flickr, vk i'm not sure what that other one is right there i'm not familiar with what that what that word is but i can also share it to here but you have to set up these features within the settings of, of the phone itself. or you can delete it so you can actually delete the pictures off of the camera so if you're on about you took a couple bad shots you don't want to keep them on the sd card but you you don't want to go through the camera itself you just want to do it really quickly on the phone you can actually go through there and select a bunch of them and just trash them right there on the spot you can also preview videos let me see if I click this one right here this is actually the video we just filmed although it's not gonna say much it says depending on your smartphone or tablet mode normal playback may not be possible so it may be a little uh, it's not gonna be smooth especially if it's a longer video it's not gonna play very smoothly and of course it's not gonna show anything because I don't have a lens on the camera so you won't be able to tell what's going on in there but it will play the video for you right there you are not able to send videos from the camera to the phone. So that's one thing you, you are not able to do. You cannot save them over, which I don't think you'd want to either, especially if it's a large file. Your phone may not even have enough space to save it onto there, or it would take a really long time through Wi-Fi to send your video over to the phone. So kind of a bummer. You are able to preview them, but you're not able to save them on. The only thing you're able to save is images. So and let's see on the bottom here, we also have a function menu. So you can also enable geotagging as well. So when you click on this and click on the play, to continue recording location data, be sure not to press the home button or the on and off button. So basically what this is going to do is this is going to keep your phone on in your pocket and it's going to geotag all the images you're taking with this camera. So it's kind of a cool feature. It's going to kill your battery, obviously, because your battery, is, your phone's going to be on the whole entire time you're taking images. But it is something that's available to you. It's kind of a bummer that the camera doesn't have that built into it. I think some other cameras do offer that functionality. But if you do want to use it, you have your phone and it will, it will use the GPS location of your phone to tag all the images that you take. Here's another option as well, photo collage. You can create a single picture by combining your favorite stills. And so if you go through here, you can select the format, the style, the images you want to do. It's something kind of nice and fun to play with if you want to mess with that. And so if you go to menu, this is where you can set connection distance, live control settings, playback settings, application functions, and such the help menu as well. So as you can see, it's really not that difficult or complicated to set it up. It's pretty cut and dry. There are a couple of variations and things that you can do differently. Like I mentioned, NFC, if you have an Android phone and you just want to tap the side of it, hold it there, and it'll sync up really quickly. That is an option, but I don't have NFC. Uh, well, I do have NFC, I guess, in the iPhone 6, but that's not uh, compatible with the iPhone 6. But for the most part, I think what you're probably going to be using this for is just taking images and checking off pictures. So more likely than not, you're going to be on a vacation taking some really awesome DSLR, high-quality pictures, and then you're going to want to put them on Instagram, Flickr, Facebook, whatever, you could pop it onto your phone and then instantly send them from your phone, which is a really nice option to have. So this is the Wi-Fi setup for the GH4 for the Panasonic. Hopefully I've uh, explained everything that you guys need to know in, in order to do this. If you guys have any questions about anything that you've seen so far in this video, please post them down below. I read each and every single one of your comments and I will always do my best to get back to you as quick as possible. Uh, obviously this is a more technical uh, process and issue. So if you are having some troubleshooting problems, I can try to do my best to help you out, but it's, I'm not always going to be able to come up with the answers to help you guys fix any issues you may be facing with this. But uh, if you do have a question or anything like that, post them down below and I promise I'll, I'll read all those and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. If I can't help you, I will be honest with you and tell you I'm not sure how to fix that issue you're having. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up as well. And if you want to stay up to date with all of my content as well as further GH4 uh, videos in this series, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can be alerted to those when they come out. And as always, guys, make sure you stop by geeksterlabs.com for the latest in tech news and video reviews. And I will see you in the next video review.